Hello everybody, hope that you are good. Today's the day is the FOMC meeting. Okay, so it's gonna be a day with a lot of volatility, spikes up and down. So I would suggest to keep your positions light, to not be overexposed, you know, be as strict with your risk management because there is going to be quite a lot of false moves probably during the FOMC. That's a 6 p.m. UTC time. Now, what we are expecting, everyone is expecting this, so this is priced in, is 25 basis points hike. Everybody's pricing that in, okay? So the market is not going to react to it when, when they announce it. But what, they are, what the market is going to react to is going to be the press conference, the words of Jerome Powell. And I want to hear what Jerome Powell has to say about the debt ceiling, because Jerome said recently that they are running out of money. So let's see what he says about the debt ceiling. Also, the federal funds futures market, they're pricing in a hike of 25 basis points now today, and then three rate cuts this year of 25 basis points each. So the most likely thing is that Jerome Powell comes out today and says, you know, we're not gonna be, we're not gonna do any rate cuts this year. He said that back in the 22nd of March, the previous FOMC. So the most likely thing is that he says the same thing. Okay. Now, is he going to also say that they're going to pause race here? Or that there might be more hikes? Because if he says that there is going to be more hikes, then the DXY is going to go up, Bitcoin is going to go down. Recession. They're going to ask him about recession. Let's see what he has to say about it. Now, it's, you know, the past, I remember that they were always trying to avoid that word, the word recession. Then in March, in the FOMC minutes, we could see that they say that they're expecting a mild recession over the next two years with high inflation also. So I think that we're going to have a very interesting press conference. There are a lot of questions, difficult questions that a journalist can ask Jerome Powell. I'm sure right now he's there with his team trying to figure out all the answers for any possible question because there are a lot of things they can ask him. Okay, you know, all those things I just, I just said. Now, let's go with Bitcoin because yesterday we had the move to 28,400. We placed this arrow and price went there because the market maker is watching these videos. <laughs> uh, now, to be honest, the projection could have been quite a lot better because it really went to the 4 hour 50 MA, you can see. Okay, maybe I was too conservative and that was a mistake. But you can see that price went to the 4 hour 50 MA. Then it did some consolidation below resistance with some spikes up. You can see in these weeks, and that means, according to my to my logic, that is because the market maker is building his shorts. You can see with this candle. All right. Um, now, if we check, I want to go really quickly to the to the um, to the S and P. Let me check that real quickly because I want to show you what I did yesterday. Okay. We were saying that yesterday it would have to test this zone as support, and then it could have marched higher, but it didn't. So price just went back inside the range, okay? That was the other scenario that we had in mind. Now, the 4 hour 50 MA is the, going to be the resistance. You know, here it was the support, you can see. And now it's, go, it's becoming resistance. So let's see how it reacts. In my opinion, this candle here, what happened yesterday, that's in anticipation of the FOMC meeting. And that's basically because the institutions, the, the investors, they are just being careful because they know there is going to be quality of volatility. So they have, they do a sell off the day before. That's, that's what I think. Okay. Let's go back to Bitcoin really quickly. Let's see, um, where we are right now. Interesting thing is that they haven't still filled this week. Maybe that's the next move. Okay. But I would like to first draw what well, mark the, the sons of interest in the chart. We have the week. We have this liquidity pool. Let's see what else I can see. Um, I can see a liquidity pool here too. And another one here. Okay. Now let me get this here. Copy and paste to mark these zones. Okay. And let's remove the 50 EMA. So in my opinion, these are the zones of interest in the chart. Now today there is going to be a lot of volatility with the press conference, I think. So the most likely thing is that price do some wild moves. I think it's very likely that today 
we might see the wick getting filled and even probably too one of these liquidity pools or even both because i'm telling you markets are gonna be quite wild i think this week is quite likely because i'm expecting jerome powell saying that there is not gonna be red coast this year that there might be more more rate increases maybe they're gonna be data dependent but for now probably they're gonna pause let's see what happens but i think this week you know any word he says it'll trigger the move because there are you know the, there are algorithms playing with keywords so it's going to be live you're going to see in live that he says the word um potential new hikes and you're going to see a candle in the one minute time frame doing this it's simple as that it's a very difficult and 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 it's not recommended to have trades open during that time so what i would suggest is to not have any positions open or any limits order set until the press conference finishes okay and that means look let me put it here for you uh i think the the fomc starts at six uh, uh this is utc time and then the press conference i think it starts at half six utc time okay so those are the times that we're gonna have all the information so i would suggest to not trade uh 30 minutes before it starts the fomc um also let me think the press conference probably last about 30 45 minutes um so i would say probably until quarter past seven okay and i'm gonna call this not trading during okay um so yes basically i'm not gonna trade 30 minutes before the FOMC starts and I'm not going to trade until at least quarter past seven. So I'm going to give it a bit of room to get all the information from the FOMC, the press conference, see how, they may, see how the market reacts. And then, yes, you can trade in balances because if we go and we see what happened previously in the 22nd of March, that was the last FOMC meeting. Let's have a look. 15 minutes time frame um let's go to the 22nd of march it's here okay let's have a look let's check this all right so you can see how we had a, a clear resistance in this zone and then at six you know they what they did is a stop hunt you know a spike above that resistance and then dump all the way here and this is I checked earlier it should be a $2,200 move. Sorry, you cannot see there. This is a $2,300 move. Then, after the press conference, you can see the price was trying to retrace this imbalance. Because, yes, you can see all these large weeks that's a liquidity pool. Um, this is another liquidity pool. This is another liquidity pool. So there is quite a lot of liquidity pools here that need to get retraced. You can see there is a wick here that also got filled. Um, that's what happened. A lot of moves, a lot of volatility, a massive move, and then they have to retrace the balance. So what we could expect to see today, let me go back to today. Let's see if we can figure it out. Uh, so if we if they drop another 2,000 from here, I mean, that's a long way. Jeez. Uh, one hour time frame, let me check. I mean, what they could do is, what about if they take us even lower? What about if they go below this one? Okay. What about this? If you do something like this, I'm just trying to to think. Okay. Fill the week and go even a bit lower, and then we can have something like this and try to fill this later on. I would say probably before the weekend. Okay. But it should be before the weekend. So what about if we see something like this today? You know, go below these lows, fit the week, you know, a lot, of, a lot of liquidity pools in this zone, and then retrace them. Or we could see that, but it's impossible to know because we don't know what he's going to say today. But I'm expecting that he's not going to be dovish. I'm expecting him to be quite, quite hawkish because... 
I think he's going to attack the federal funds futures market. So the first move that I'm expecting, but I might be wrong, is to go to the downside and then retrace that up. But who knows? Just, you know, uh, I'm going to wait because this, we might see this by inverted to the upside and see this and see something like this, you know, who knows? And then retrace. And this would probably go, which also would make sense above these highs here. So why not? We could see something like this also. So I would suggest you guys to wait, be patient. I think if you open a trade before the FOMC, that's pretty much gambling. <laughs> so uh, wait until the FOMC, wait, wait until the first conference finishes, see the imbalance they've created. And then, yes, you can start to think about trading those imbalances. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you soon.